Hey, gorgeous. Welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast with Holly Wharton, which combines powerful strategies on how to upgrade your business mindset, along with practical business tips to grow your business. This podcast features solo shows with Holly and also interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. And now, here's your host, Holly Wharton. Hello and welcome to the Business Mindset Podcast, episode 176. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with today's special guest, Lisa Lister, who was last a guest on episode 91. So Lisa is a writer and a menstrual fertility and reproductive health practitioner. She's the founder of the She Flow System, which invites women to celebrate the fiercely feminine, sensual pleasure of being a woman through movement, massage, mysteries, and magic. Lisa is dedicated to helping women women crack their lady code, reconnect with their body wisdom, and love their lady landscape. Welcome, Lisa. Hey, welcome. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. I'm so excited to have you back. Oh. So why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about your background and what it is that you do, and then we'll move into our topic for today, which is your books. Okay, so predominantly, I work with women. So I do women's work. (laughs) That's the overarching title. So I I love working with women to navigate what it is to be a woman in this modern world using our own maps, the maps that are inside us, like the kind of ancient wisdom that we knew before we forgot. So I work with women around their menstrual cycle and the seasons of the moon and of mama nature and then to talk, how can we make that ancient wisdom really relevant to living in this really fast-paced time-starved society that we currently live in so that's like the very very broad brush strokes <laughs> and so within that I yeah I, I massage I teach yoga I write books and and I do like one-to-one with women around their menstrual health fertility and their reproductive health too Excellent. So let's talk a little bit about your life as an author. You're kind of... Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's so... predominantly what I do, to be honest. That's yeah. what I've been doing all of my... Well, for, for like the latter part of my um, last last part of my time here on earth so (laughs) it's like it's been writing books and I love writing so yeah let's talk that all right so your previous book Code Red which I love and recommend to everyone that was a book that you self-published correct yes yes I did and your current book Love Your Lady Landscape was published by Hay House so could you tell us a little bit about how you made the move from being a self-published author to a Hay House author well, Code Red was a book that I had to write. You know, it was definitely it was one of those books that. So I'd, I published previous. Um, I'd written some children's books with Harper Collins. Mm-hmm. So I'd worked predominantly in the publishing industry, and I was an editor for a freelance editor for different publications such as Harper Collins and Penguin. And so I kind of knew that world really well. Mm-hmm. But I also know from being in that world that if I wanted to write the book I, I was going to write when I was writing Code Red. I was going to have to self-publish. Mm. So just in the sense of I need it, I personally, I mean, I'm a control freak. I put, completely hold my hands up to that. I needed control of that book because it just felt like it was a book that was moving through me. It wasn't like something I've been commissioned to write. It was like this one is moving through me, needs to be told in the way that it's told without like heavy editorial domination really from somebody else in terms of how we're going to sell it. Because that's generally how it works, right? So I knew that I just wanted to write a book and that women would find it and that the emphasis wouldn't be on like, how are we going to sell it? What are the hooks and and all of the language that kind of goes around creating books? So I needed to make sure that that one was done that way. And that was an incredible experience, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a second. And then when that book came out, it took on, and as I'd hoped and and as I've been guided by my own guides and by she was, it took on a life of its own. And so it wasn't about using any of the kind of heavy masculine marketing structures like <laughs> that kind of sell sell mm. what happened is like it was there was like a kind of like a swell among sisters who were like oh my god have you read this like you need to read this you need to share this and like you know you invite me on this show and then you mm. telling other women about it and that's how that book became popular you know that's how that book became something that women are going oh my god you need to read this which is great which was the goal except it wasn't like I didn't know that was the goal but I just knew <laughs> that I just knew that that's how it had to be out and that's how it had to come out into the world and so I trusted my instincts on that and that's how it worked but by doing that by creating something that I allowed to come out in the world 
her house were then interested in publishing a book with me. And so we talked about maybe we would republish, they would republish Code Red. They've done that with other books, which is great. That's so someone has self-published and then they'll republish it. But then I was like, it's doing its own thing, mm. you know, and it really is its own thing. And so, yeah, I sat down with one of the editors there who is amazing. I mean, they're all amazing, actually. And, and it has been a big dream. It has been on a manifesting board for a very long time. You know, the whole ethos behind Hay House and mm. Louise Hay being this like force of female awesomeness you know and, <laughs> and it's like yeah you stand for everything that I would want to be a part of and so to the idea if I was going to publish with anyone mm. and because of the experience with Code Red actually self-publishing it was actually a really beautiful interesting exciting quite scary experience <laughs> after that I was fully aware I was like actually this is cool like I could totally do this again mm. and, and so it wasn't the natural step to publish with a publisher but because there was an interest from them which was great and we talked and we and I said like what well, I have planned next and and they were in they were mm. totally like, okay well we'll support you in the next step and I'm like brilliant and so I said this was great because it was able to build on code red and it was able to reach more people, I guess, in a more mainstream way, but also in that softer, more, you know, they're a family and there's a definitely like a kind of softer edge to how they share their material in the world than maybe a big publisher like HarperCollins, for example. Yeah. <laughs> so they approached you then? Yeah, well, we've been in discussions. Like mm -hmm. I, they said that, like, we love what you do. And I'm like, yeah, I love what you do. <laughs> <laughs> And like, We're a good fit. Do you think we could do some stuff together? I'm like, yep, totally. But I still had to pitch absolutely like anyone else has to pitch. You know, there wasn't any special treatment around that. I did a proposal. Um, it was like a 35 page proposal. And I spent more time probably on getting that proposal <laughs> right than I did writing the whole book. Because you get one chance at these things, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's so important to spend so much time, like to spend really, yeah, spend a lot of time on the proposal because that's the thing. Once you have the proposal, the book actually becomes really easy to write too. Mm. So for people who may not have gone through this experience before, what is a book proposal? Is that a structure, kind of an outline, an yeah, introduction? It's, yeah, it's all of those things. So basically you are creating the structure for the book, like where your book fits, you're finding books out there that are like it, but not, but dominantly be your competition, but like, and how you're different from mm -hmm. them. You're showing them everything they need to know so that they can, because basically they're going to be taking the risk for you. Like when you self publish, like you're taking all the risks, mm -hmm. right? So if you're going to a publisher, you're going to want them to take the risk for you. Like, and when I say risks, I mean like the financial implications mm. of publishing it and knowing that there's a market for what you're doing. And so actually you need to prove to them that them spending money on publishing and promoting your book is a worthwhile goal. So that's what the proposal is. It's like, this is how great I am. So you tell them how great you are. <laughs> This is why you're the person to write the book. This is the book. And this is why this book is needed now. And you share everything and a structure for the book, chapter outlines. And it gets, you know, you have to get fully geeky with it. You have to go there with the, I mean, some people don't. But I just suggest that if you want somebody to read your proposal, then you're going to just need to make it really kick ass. Yeah. That's always been my advice for anyone that I've, um, that I've shared information about book writing with. <laughs> Well, like you said, you've got one chance. Yeah. And so that, and even though I had the communication open mm. with, I was like, they're only going to offer this opportunity for me to be seen by their team once, mm. really. I mean, maybe they would, maybe there'd be other opportunities, who knows. But in my eyes at that moment, there was that one time. So I was like, right, I'm going to create this proposal. And it was Lady, Lovely Lady Landscape. And mm. they take it to a meeting. They take the proposal to a meeting. They talk to all their team members. And then once they've spoken to their team members, their team members decide. And that's all different elements. So, you know, you have to, it's like an acquisitions meeting. So they have to decide, like, the, the foreign rights people need to see if it's something they would sell. Then the cover people think, is it something we could create a cover for? You know, it's just like just so yeah. many different yeah. yeses and nos and ifs, buts and maybes and all of those <laughs> things that get involved, which, you know, are really not involved in self-publishing. So, mm. so yeah. do they also have requirements for, like, your online presence? Like, do you have to have a certain email list size, Facebook followers, that kind of thing? Do they ask you about that? I think that's more so with every publisher now mm. as well. I mean, and definitely, definitely for Hay House, I think. I mean, and I haven't got lots of, yeah, I've got about 10,000, I guess, across platforms. Mm -hmm. There are lots of people that have got <laughs> like hundreds and hundreds and thousands more. And there are people that have got less. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's the thing. 
and it absolutely uh, personally I don't think it should be so if it is the thing that makes me sad but I do know that a lot of publishers are asking for social media presence to at least be active and used every day I don't know exact numbers I think oh now you say that though I think um yeah okay I, I don't know I'm gonna say <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I've heard conversations where people have said that there needs to be a certain number. Yeah. I know they ask for it to be active and for it to be growing and mm-hmm. then for there to be growth. I think, but that's across the board with all the yeah. comments that I've seen. Yeah, I think that makes sense because they want to know that you're not just going to sit back and wait for them to publish, uh, publish and promote your book, that you're going to be active in getting it out there as well. Absolutely. And I think that's what so many people are not aware of anymore. Like I predominantly, you know, I've been a writer all my life. So I wrote, I wrote for teen magazines and then I wrote for women's magazines and now I write books. So I'm a writer first and foremost, mm. but actually <laughs> you can't just be a writer. Mm-hmm. Like a book is just a part of the puzzle now. Um, whether, and whether you can totally agree or disagree with whether that's a good or a bad thing. Like I'm still not sure to be honest, <laughs> but it is the world that we're currently living in. So it yeah. means that we have to be able to make videos. You know, that's my worst. Like the yeah. idea of you know, video is not my thing. You know, there's an ask for that. It's not a necessity, but it is. And I don't mean just from publishers. I just mean in terms of if you are going to put anything out there in the world now, like a book, you can't just put the book out there and hope that it no. does the work. <laughs> you have to be active in that process now, which yeah. is like, so I just know so many like old school authors are like, this is ridiculous. I'm like, I hear you, <laughs> but this is the world we live in. Exactly. Things have changed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So having said that, how do you think working with Hay House as a Hay House author has raised your profile or helped your business or helped you get out there in a bigger way? Hmm. It's only been two months, so I'm not entirely sure that I've had a chance to really have a little look at that and assess that, really. I think, obviously, they've got a huge reach. Mm-hmm. And there's also a lot of kudos attached to being a Hay House author. Mm-hmm. I'm blessed that, I mean, for me personally, I don't know how it's affected like the outer reach, but for me personally, the difference between publishing with them and self-publishing is that there's a support team there. Like, they, I mean, in Hay House, more than any other publisher I've worked for, and I will definitely say this, are a family and, and it feels very supportive mm-hmm. to be part of that family. That's beautiful. And probably in that means that you feel much more inclined to work with them to promote it you know what I mean so it actually yeah. like a beautiful experience and so yeah and my social media numbers have grown mm-hmm. but I don't know whether that was I saw that happen in any way mm-hmm. um previous to that through code red and just through natural growth so it's not like there's been a shoot in numbers mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. just like there's been natural growth mm-hmm. and yeah I mean I don't for me I don't see a lot of difference on the outside yet but like I say, it's only been two months yeah, since yeah. my book's been released. So I think like there there may be that might be something to really look to in six months' time and go, Oh, okay, I definitely see there's a difference here and there's a difference here. And I've been asked to maybe do more things or mm. you know, people might know me more now than they did before. Mm. That sort of thing, I imagine. So when you say that Hay House has been really supportive in the process <clears throat> of helping you get the book out there, what kind of support do you feel like they've given you? I think there's, some, I mean, the team here in the UK are small and which means that like you get to know people personally. Mm. So if, when I've worked with previous publishers, like there's a lot of people and so they've got their one job to do and then that job just happens and like you may never meet them. So here it feels like they're a team mm. and so you get that support. And so, I mean, with Code Red, when I worked so hard on Code Red, when it came out, I was actually really too tired to do any of the promotion. Right? Like, and I hadn't scheduled any of that in to the equation of publishing a book. So I'm like, yeah, OK, I understand that I've got to write it. I understand that I've got to edit it. I understand that I've got to publish it. Good work. Hadn't thought at any point, like, OK, so you also have to schedule in publicising. Promotion. Yeah, promotion, publicising the book. And so, of course, I knew it was there. I knew it was definitely a part of it. But I thought it would just be natural progression and I'd do it afterwards. With Hay, with Hay House, that's definitely something that's ingrained into you as soon as you start the book process. It's like, right, okay, we're going to meet, we're going to talk about promotion. And so that's a very big part of the practice. And so for me, it's been great because it's like, right, okay, that's scheduled in before the book's released mm. and that's part of the process. So I've definitely learned lots in that way. But And to also feel supported in that, like they've got great contacts and they're really helpful in working with you as opposed to telling you what to do or 
doing it without your say so so there's a very much a collaborative experience which I've not experienced with publishers previously mm, excellent so what was the timeline like between you sending in the proposal and the book coming out and all the processes in between so it's quick <laughs> really that is something you never hear from traditional publishing I know. I know and so that's what I wasn't experienced that's wasn't I wasn't expecting you know I really wasn't expecting it to be that quick again worked with publishers before so you could say so for example if I was to hand in a proposal now to someone like Harper Collins for example that book wouldn't be published to 2019 because yeah. their schedule is packed what's great um, about Hay House is that there's a kind of flexibility around their schedule like so they know that they're taking on new authors or they know that new projects are coming in and they allow for that flexibility and they also work with the timings of I don't know like of <laughs> which feels like crazy but like you know so if you know, if a book's coming out, they'll work with the the patterns of practices that are happening in the, the spiritual world. So they'll know that this is, you know, that this is a great time to publish a book on, you know, nature in mm-hmm. summer. I mean, in mm-hmm. spring, for example, or we'll publish, you know, so they work predominantly with knowing what's going to work best for their market. And yeah. so that's great. Um, but so I handed in my proposal last about this time last year, so mm-hmm. September, October, was commissioned and the book was due in January. Wow. Uh, end of January and published in May. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I was not expecting that. And it was great because I'm such a, I work predominantly in the feminine energy. Yeah. <laughs> so to have that masculine structure was definitely something that caused some irritation (laughs) and (laughs) aggravation in this body but to be able to work to have that what it felt like is that that provided some real kind of banks so that the river could flow Mm -hmm. whereas you know code red probably took me like two and a half years to write wow yeah (laughs) so it's like okay that's good and and also I had lots of notes and because I'd written a a really strong proposal I was very clear about what I was going to create and so I had to get a little bit disciplined around the creation process like I say I wasn't used to that I've really been in my feminine energy around that so it was definitely and it was definitely a great (laughs) a great learning practice for me to but I'm used to working to deadline as well so Mm -hmm. magazines and things so it was helpful yeah so I see that on Amazon on the 7th of March 2017 Mm -hmm. Playhouse is producing another book of yours (laughs) apparently so (laughs) (laughs) yes it's called Witch and so that was also Um, I pitched at the same time because it was an idea that was coming through me and I said do you think this would be something you'd be interested in looking at and so I was blessed that as that that was something they were actually looking for so they were looking for an author to write about witches Mm. and about witchcraft and how we can use it as modern women and that was a case of right place right time so I had had an idea they were looking for something there was like the the stars were clearly aligned and that was commissioned at the same time so Mm. I was very blessed. Excellent. So yeah. how flexible is Hay House in terms of if you publish a book with them and then kind of want to do some self-publishing on your own and then come back to them? You know, are they open to you continuing to self-publish on your own if you wanted to? Yeah. Because I know a lot of publishers kind of want you to either stick with oh, them yeah. on their timeline and not do anything extra. No, I think what's great is that they're so fully supportive of their authors. Mm. So they're super supportive of Like you really are a member of the family once you're in. So like you could go to them with a new idea Mm -hmm. and then they would say yes or no if that was a choice you wanted to make as well, as opposed to thinking, oh, oh goodness, I have to like this is just like a one book thing and then they're not interested after that like you can definitely go to them with a new idea and what's great is that they will say yes or no as well it's not like you're signed into them but also they're not signed into you either like you don't think oh I've I've published with Hay House once they're going to publish me again I mean that's not you really have to prove yourself each time you send in a proposal but yeah you're open to and it might be different again it will depend on your contract right I mean that it depends on if you've got an agent then your agent may suggest to them that you sign in for a three book deal or Mm. you sign or that you only sign for a one book deal mm. it will just depend on if you haven't got an agent I haven't got an agent then... that was gonna be my next question <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I've had an agent in the past and that was great but they take 15 yeah. percent so that whilst they can get you a great deal then know that that great deal will probably go back down to what you're offered in the first place because they take 15 percent of that great mm. deal so it just depends and it just depends on the work as well I think because I know the industry I feel quite yeah, confident in knowing how to negotiate that. But if you didn't, then I totally get why you would need an agent. I'm not against them. I, I really mm-hmm. think they're. I think they're great. But I think it depends on your genre. Yeah. Like in this field, in in self help and and stuff like that. I think like the advances aren't massive, and so actually you can pretty much 
if you run a business, then you can negotiate your own book deal. That, yeah, that's what okay, I would yeah. suggest. But so if you, you're writing a novel and you're pitching a and you're pitching that and you want a thirty grand advance, then you need an agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so you felt absolutely comfortable going in signing this contract with a house on your own. Yeah, but I've like I say, I've been in the publishing industry yeah. for twenty years, so it's like, and I've seen like how that works. Yeah. Um, I can't and I'm blessed I I have author friends who I can ask like okay so I'm being offered this what do you think um do you think more do you think like I could ask for should I ask for these rights should I ask for that like I ask a lot of advice from Mm. friends and people that know their stuff I also you know you can also pay for advice like I offer it and Mm. other authors like you know you could say I'm looking to do this but you know um I want to publish with these publishers do you know can you help and then mm. authors are willing to help but also I wouldn't go in like can I can I lend your ear or can I twist you know when, the, when people ask that it's like actually yeah. just say, can I pay for an hour of your time they'll be yeah. much more easy to do it That's <laughs> exactly <what I> <laughs> So one thing that you mentioned was the advance yeah. and how it's not massive in the world of nonfiction and self-help books. So yeah. what can authors or potential authors expect to get in terms of an advance if they worked with Hay House or a similar publisher? I mean, it will vary. It yeah. will totally vary on your skill set, on what you bring into the table. Like if you've got 30K followers, for example, and you've already got a, tr- a proven track record and of people following from you and buying from you because these are the things that matter these Mm. days over the fact of whether your book is great or not (laughs) and that's not with Hay House that's with everyone yeah what's a business they need to know that they can sell the book absolutely so I think you have to be really open to that and so if you're not then expect you know if you're just starting out and you can't prove those things yet but you've got a strong idea and you've got a strong book I think you can expect I don't know between two and four thousand pounds maybe Mm -hmm advance and then if you as you get as your you know if you, your credentials at, or an agent yeah. <laughs> depending which could negotiate how that would look but it wouldn't be lots it mm. you know I say it would vary between like two to three thousand through to about fifteen thousand for self-help or for non-fiction predominantly mm-hmm. that's my experience and that's my um, experience of friends and clients who work in this field I think if you're looking at fiction then you can look to much bigger mm. well, Fiction is more of a mass market thing. I mean, it's depending still, on what genre you're writing, of course. But yeah, I mean, it's something to be sold to millions and millions and millions of people. Exactly right. And, so, and then also advances are not the, I mean, <laughs> we think it's free money, but you have to earn it back. So actually, I yeah. take a lower, I take, I would personally take a lower advance knowing that I then have to sell my book. And as soon as I've sold enough books to pay off my advance, I then start making money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's what people don't understand. They think you get the advance and then you get a percentage of the book sales, but that's just, it's an advance as the book, (laughs) as the name (laughs) says. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so that's why with, when you self publish, what's great is that you have that from the start. Mm -hmm. You know, you're totally in control of all of it. And so I published Code Red with Create Space. Yep. And so I made money from the very first sale. And I'm in control of that. And I still make money every month from that. Whereas I won't see any money perhaps from my book for six to eight months, maybe depending on sales, depending on all of those. I mean, there's so many factors. Mm-hmm. But so it depending on why it's, it, you know, it's depending on why you want to write a book and what you want that book to achieve for yeah. you. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And that's the first thing you need to think about before you sit down to write the book or the proposal or anything. Yeah, I mean, if if like Hay House, you know, or HarperCollins or I don't know, Penguin or any of these things are your goal, then you you sit down, you write a great proposal and you know you're not going to make money out of that book for a little while. Yeah. You know, you might get a nice advance, but that will, you know, that's probably going to probably be a month's salary for most people it's not going to be long enough to actually write the book so yeah just I think there was a very glamorous you know the yeah. concept around being an author for a very long time unfortunately now like it has become much more business-like and so yeah you just have to get savvy about what it is you want like if you want to if you know you want to write a book and you want it to promote your business there is a much better chance that you will be more effective mm. if you were to self-publish and know then that you know when you self-publish that publishers do find you it happened yeah. to me right so yeah. you know it's like publishers will find you 
and just concentrate on creating something that's great for your business and then you will also make money from it because then you know you have to be the one to promote it and yes. it becomes a it becomes a you know you're, <laughs> you you have to either look at whether you want to employ people or whether you're the one to do it like I waited a couple of months because I was tired but then once I did promote it it was great and that was the great thing as well it wasn't to anyone else's schedule I was able to promote I mean, to release a book into the world leave it for three months mm. then start my promotional campaign yeah. When you work with a publisher, it doesn't work like that. You know, you have to work really hard the month before that book comes out. And actually, the week, the, the time after that is less important to a publisher. Mm hmm. You know, so it's not less important to you as an author. Actually, you have to continue the work. Yeah. <laughs> you want anything to happen. Yeah. And but yeah, to the publisher, it's the month before. Whereas mm -hmm. actually, when you self-publish, you get to choose when you launch, and then you can relaunch as many times as you want too. So there's lots of pluses and minuses to both. Mm, I think that's a good point. So Lisa, what are your tips for listeners who may want to publish with sell with Hay House in the future? What should they be thinking about? <sighs> I don't know like I, I also don't think you should put all your eggs in one basket yeah. either. like I think like the idea of going I want to publish with Hay House really kind of narrows the possibility of you sharing your work in the world so I wouldn't suggest doing that I mean I definitely had Hay House on a on a manifesting board many years ago but also I published a lot in between before then as well so don't make personally I wouldn't make that your goal mm -hmm. but if that is your goal then I also don't want to take away from that. So <laughs> um, I know in my editor, and that's probably who you would send it to if you're sending it to the UK, like she would want a really amazing proposal and she would need to be super thorough with that proposal as well, like to make sure you cover every element of the industry that you're sharing the book on, the concept that you're sharing the book on, like get super clear on chapters, um, make sure your social media is active and there's growth there and you can prove that you're doing things to actively grow that mm -hmm. have a mailing list and so I know these things to be true but I also just want to put out there that I don't want that to stop people writing material mm -hmm. I don't want those things to be the reason like you don't like oh I'm not going to write a book until I've got 10,000 followers write yeah. the book anyway yeah you know the book anyway yes I, I love that I'm published by Hay House but it doesn't define me as a writer or me as a businesswoman or me as a woman in the world either so like I just want to yeah I just want to make that really really clear too I think there's like there was a great you know I had a great feedback from Code Red when I self-published and I'm having great feedback from Love Your Lady Landscape which is published by Hay House I think they're they've both been a different experience but I also think they're super that they both hold equal amounts of power for mm. me is and um, publishing and being a businesswoman in the world too mm. yeah I think that's a really good point they're two very very different experiences and they're both valid experiences yeah. and you just need to go with whatever works for you yeah and know that if it's a no from Hay House once it doesn't mean it's always a no from them and also know there are other publishers out there yeah but also know that taking control of it and self-publishing isn't the negative there's not so many negative connotations as there was when I first started out. Um, I remember people when they took, they called it vanity publishing. Yeah, that's so icky. And it's awful. And it's like, actually, like it's, it was, it's been one of the most powerful experiences for me to have a book in the world that I created from scratch, that I hired an editor that I wanted to work with, that I created the cover that I wanted to create, mm -hmm. that it is now in the world doing its incredible magic because of how, the women are receiving the information that I've shared. That's massive. Like mm. that feels so massive to me and one of my proudest accomplishments. And I think that's a massive accomplishment. Self-publishing, you've got to kind of be the project manager of your book in addition to writing it. So yeah. yeah. And you have to call people in and you have to ask for help because you can't do it on your own. No. Like you just can't. And, no. and definitely if you are self-publishing, please hire an editor. That's yeah. all I ask. Please <laughs> even if you are one like I am an editor but there and um, you know and I spent years being an editor but I also am acutely aware that I can't edit my own work and nor can you so just know that <laughs> just, just know that before we start <laughs> <laughs> excellent so Lisa I'm, I'm conscious of time but I wanted to give you a chance to say how can our women listeners yeah where can they find your book and books and how can they work with you cool so I'm at www.thesassyshe dot com mm -hmm. and you can meet reach me there i'm on instagram at sassy lisa lister that's my chosen form of social media big fan <laughs> um, and you can work with me in lots of ways i do also do i used to be a writing coach before i kind of went into the went more into the female reproductive system as my, <laughs> as my, as my um, teacher and 
but so there are if you go into my about page and and if this was something you were really interested in i i'm I'm really happy to help women on this part of their journey if they're looking to put a proposal together and things like that it's still something i'm really passionate about because we need more women's voices in the world and that's why i get so passionate about like people that only want to publish with one publisher or i'm like i love hay house i want you all to publish with them but you know what i want more is i want you to have a voice and i want you to share your stories in the world and not let the idea of uh, publishing with one publisher kind of limit you to sharing that story or publishing with any publisher because yeah, as, we, as we've seen you can self-publish <laughs> yeah there's loads there's loads of ways to to share your story just make sure that you're sharing your story the world needs more women's voices mm. excellent i think that's the best message <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure to have you back on the show and I could talk to you for days about the publishing world, but I guess, yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And thank you for listening. And remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 176 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to the Business Mindset Podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave a quick review of this podcast. It just takes a minute. Thank you.